Okay, so in this video, we will look at properties of limits. We will not prove any one of them. The idea is to understand them and see that they are all very intuitive. So here are the ingredients. We let k be a fixed real number. We have two functions, f and g, and we assume that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to uppercase f which means, as we've said before, as x is getting closer and closer to a, f of x is getting closer and closer to this fixed value. And the same goes for the other function, g of x. As x is getting closer and closer to a, g of x will be getting closer and closer to the value uppercase g. Now, we're using here two-sided limits. The same would hold true if we had limits from the left or limits from the right. But we'll only write the properties in the case of a two-sided limit, but keep in mind that everything works for one-sided limits as well. So first property. You'll see they're all very intuitive. So what if we ask, what happens to the constant k as x is approaching a? And so this is pretty obvious. k is a constant. k is always equal to k. And so as x is getting closer and closer to a, k is always k, and so k is approaching k. No matter what the value of a is, k does not depend on x, and so k is always k. So as x is approaching a, k is approaching itself. Property 2. If we know that f of x approaches uppercase f as x approaches a, what about k times f of x? Well, if you think of it, as x is approaching a, we know that f of x is approaching uppercase f. As k is a constant, k always remains k. So as f of x is getting closer and closer to f, k times f of x will be getting closer and closer to k times f. And that's it. Again, very intuitive. Property 3. What if we ask what happens as x approaches a to the sum or the difference, plus or minus, either a plus or a minus, between f of x and g of x? Well, again, this is very intuitive. As x is approaching a, f of x is getting closer and closer to f, and g of x is getting closer and closer to g. And so the sum will be approaching f plus g, or the difference f minus g. Once again, very intuitive. You could ask, what about the product of f of x and g of x as x approaches a? Once again, this is fairly intuitive. As x is approaching a, we know f of x is approaching f, g of x is approaching g. So if f is getting closer and closer to f, and g of x is getting closer and closer to g, the product will be getting closer and closer to f times g. Once again, very intuitive. One last property. This one we have to add a little condition. What about the quotient of f and g? So we're asking as x approaches a, what happens to the quotient of f of x and g of x? Well, again we use our intuition. As x approaches a, f of x is getting closer and closer to uppercase f. g of x is getting closer and closer to uppercase g. So naturally, the quotient will be getting closer and closer to f over g. Of course, there could be a problem here. The quotient may not exist if g is actually 0. So we have to add here the condition if, as long as, the limit of g of x, uppercase g, is not equal to 0. And so all of these properties are very intuitive. And that's how you should approach every limit problem. If things are intuitive, if there's no problem, you'll use these properties instinctively.
but just for good measure, here they are. In our next video, we will consider examples of algebraic limits and we'll always use these properties intuitively and implicitly. We won't always refer to them, we'll just naturally use them because as we sign each case, they're all fairly intuitive.